Hello, this is the group presentation for the business strategy game Industry 3 from Texas A&M Corpus Christi. We are team Credence Athletics. My name is Michael Van Cleve and I'm joined by my co-managers Bradley Porras and Ruth Montijo. The strategic vision of Credence Athletics is to be the provider of choice for serious athletes around the globe. Through premium quality, workmanship, and product innovation, Credence Athletics will deliver the highest standards in athletic footwear. When Credence Athletics began in year 11, we did not have a clear strategy or real sense of direction, and it really showed in the results as we finished down near the bottom of the pack. The company also had no clear distinction from the competition as you can see, everyone was kind of bunched up in the middle of the chart. As we began to move into year 12, we really stepped back and, and reflected on what we felt would make Credence Athletics successful and made a commitment to be a global differenti differentiation provider with an emphasis on higher quality and above average spending on advertising rebates and retailer support. This contributed to the company's much higher than average image rating and its overall success. The company also made the decision in years 12 through 15 to focus on high profit margins and low market share in the Latin America region due to the higher costs associated with business in that region. And we also focused on wholesale market sales more than the internet market in all four regions. As we moved into years 16 through 17, the final two years of the competition, we remained committed to our global differentiation strategy, but began shifting gears to focus more on minimizing labor, advertising, and production costs while maximizing profits. The company cut retailer support, increased delivery times, cut free shipping for online orders, and reduced rebates. The company also began to increase its presence in the Latin America market due to favorable exchange, rate, exchange rates and shifted its focus in Asia Pacific from market share to maximizing profits within a smaller segment. In addition, the company began increasing its internet market business in lieu of additional wholesale sales. When we look at the private label market, we really had a consistent strategy throughout years 11 through 17, and that was to maintain at least some type of presence in the private label market each year. Focus was placed on minimizing costs, outbidding the competition, and using any available overtime capacity in the Asia Pacific plants to provide retailers with private label footwear. With the exception of one bid, the company's strategy was successfully executed throughout the years. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ruth to discuss the trends the company saw over the seven year period. Thank you, Michael. So I am gonna talk about the trends that we saw throughout the year. So we're gonna start out with the annual total revenues, um, which you can see in the graph in front of you that we had um, really steady growth beginning in year 10 through year 17. We had large growth in years 11 and 12. That was from a specific focus on gaining market share through increased sales to volume um, towards the beginning of the game. Uh, from then on, we had steady growth from years 13 to 17 as our differentiation strategy really started to take a hold. Our earnings per share, um, the growth was a little more sporadic. Uh, in year 11, we saw a decrease due to footwear being priced lower than the average. Uh, that was actually a strategic decision that we made um, so that we could focus on gaining market share early in the game. Uh, in year 12, a decision was made to then focus only on our differentiation strategy, which was more on acquiring higher margins than on, a high, than on the market share itself. 
which you can see in this graph as far as the global market share, you can see that as our earnings were increasing and our margins were increasing, our market share was decreasing. That was a strategic decision. Um, so we had a large increase in year 11 as we really tried to lower our prices to gain initial market share. Then we saw a downward trend as the differentiation strategy was implemented and the focus shifted on the sale of quality products at higher margins. For our stock prices, the stock prices varied uh, definitely more greatly throughout the years. It ended significantly higher in years 16 and 17. So although we had some ups and downs related to the stock price, we ended with a strong $214 stock price in year 17, which we are actually very proud of. Our return on equity trend varied greatly in the first three years. After that, it really started to level off a little bit. Um, years uh, 16 and 17 remained flat for those two years, so that was actually an interesting trend there. The last item that I will be discussing is the image rating. Um, our image rating started out at 70, year 11, where we lacked a true strategy. We were at an image rating of 73. Um, once we really decided on our strategy, uh, our goal was to maintain our image rating no lower than 90, which you can see we really successfully did, ending year 17 with an image rating of 90. And now Bradley is going to discuss the strategic planning exercise. Thanks, Ruth. In our strategic planning exercise, we really focused on solidifying the strategy that we had already implemented in the previous years. The global differentiation strategy of a 10 SQ rating, higher than average advertising, high retail support, and above average prices was the strategy we looked to undertake. We set our goals in year 15, 16, and 17 as high marks but not extremely lofty. This was in case we encountered an unfavorable market, we wouldn't upset our investors too badly, but it was also a goal that we could attain or if we had a good market, we could surpass. In year 15, we were about at the expectations that we were shooting for. And in year 16 and 17, when we really looked to minimize our labor costs and pull out of some retail support, we saw a slight drop in our image rating, but our earnings per share and our stock price really took off. Competitor analysis. As we mentioned before, in year 11, we really didn't have a key competitive strategy, but once we found our niche in the market from 12 to 17, of this global differentiation strategy where we had a high quality product and high prices, we found success. And with the success, we found imitators as well. By the end of the game, company A had a 10 SQ strategy, companies F and G had nine SQ strategies, and company B and H had eight SQ strategies. Much like in real life in industry three, Imitators did not have success. We had already established our place in the market and had our economies of scale set in place for the 10SQ high quality strategy. And this made it difficult for our competitors to minimize their costs to duplicate our strategy. Our competitors also internally were unable to balance their wholesale internet and private label sales. Many times they set their private label price of shoes too high or they asked for too many shoes to be sold, missing on their private label, which greatly affected their earnings per share. Our lessons learned. As we've mentioned before, we didn't have a strategy in year 11, and that hurt us. When we had a strategy, we had success. You need to commit to your strategy early. The BSG is a dynamic game. You need to study the reports and study your competitors. You always need to allow to have success in an unfavorable market as well as a favorable market. You, if you set out and have a strategy that is a, a one type of strategy and we have to do this, you're setting yourself up for failure. If you have a strategy that can succeed in unfavorable markets as well as favorable markets, you'll have success. You want to minimize your costs by finding the right mix of price, advertising, retail support, rebates, and delivery times each year. 
as mentioned, it's a dynamic game, and the market conditions, your competitors, and your decisions in the past greatly affect what type of steps you should make going forward. Finally, you need to pay attention to the exchange rates and the cost of doing business between different countries. If you have a, if you are not um, planning out your strategy of distribution well, you might have a winning strategy, but you'll hurt yourself in the long run in distribution prices. I'm Bradley from Michael and Ruth at Creedence Athletics. I'd like to thank you for your time.